Hey everyone, welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. If you are tuning in today for the first time, we are in the middle of a genealogy project, but it isn't too late to participate. Today is part four. Well, hello! Welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sabovas. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, language, genealogy, and share stories from our guests. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll explore Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll introduce you to some fun people and organizations who love their Hungarian heritage and share some great resources with you so you can get connected to your Hungarian heritage in a deeper way. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. Hi there, this is part four of the Itzi Pizzi edition of the Hungarian Living Podcast on getting started with genealogy. Today's assignment is for you to track down the birth and death locations of the people you listed in part one of this Itzi Pizzi podcast. If you missed that assignment, there is a link to this podcast in the show notes. Recently, I've spent time looking around for the burial plots of deceased family members, and it is incredibly easy to lose track of where people are buried. It happens so quickly. Of course, I have never been a big one to visit cemeteries, so that doesn't help. And I'm not sure, but I think some of this has to do with that I've always lived quite a distance from where my people are buried. My grandmother had seven children altogether, but only three lived to adulthood. I do know the cemetery the younger four are buried in, but I guess I want to know where in the cemetery they are. At this point, they are in unmarked graves. And since they died when they were children, I never met them. Even though burying children was common back in those days, it was never easy. The loss of these young ones definitely left some wounds in the family, even if it was never formally discussed. So as you are collecting names and birthplaces and death places, remember there may be some young ones that lived their lives before you were even born. Their names and details are a part of the fabric of your family, and they are important to note. Where they are laid to rest also marks where the family lived during that time, and that is also very useful genealogy information. Be sure to check out HungarianLiving.com for more resources as you explore your Hungarian heritage. Stay tuned for part five of the Itzi Pizzi edition of the Hungarian Living podcast on getting started with genealogy. Do you want to learn the Hungarian language, Hungarian history, or learn how to research the Hungarian side of your family? We've got you covered. Check out all our learning opportunities as well as meaningful books and gifts at thehungarianstore.com. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of the Hungarian Living Podcast, please share it with someone you know who loves their Hungarian heritage. If you own a business and would like to talk about sponsoring an episode of the podcast, please contact us at podcast at hungarianliving.com for more information. Special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, we'd love to hear from you. We'll catch you next time.